Once upon a time, there lived a poor carpenter named Geppetto. He was a master craftsman and made many beautiful things out of wood. He made furniture and ornaments and intricate wooden toys for children. He loved children, but had never found a wife, so didn't have a family of his own. He worked for many days on a life-size wooden puppet of a little boy to keep him company. Geppetto often wished for his puppet to come to life. He would look up at the stars and say, I want to be a father. I would give anything for my little puppet boy to become real. That night, a fairy was listening to Geppetto and his prayers. She saw into his heart and knew he was a kind man. She waved her magic wand, and when he woke up in the morning, Geppetto was astonished to see the wooden boy dancing around his workshop. Father, your wish came true, and I'm a real boy now, he chirped in his little wooden voice. Geppetto wept with joy. My son, he said, I will name you Pinocchio. Geppetto wanted Pinocchio to be just like all the other boys, so he used up all his savings to buy some school books. He sent Pinocchio off on the path to school, warning him not to talk to strangers. On the way, Pinocchio noticed a strange man with a twirly mustache and a top hat. The man's eyes lit up when he spotted Pinocchio. I'm a puppet master, the strange man said, and I'm looking for little boys like you. Would you like to join my show? Pinocchio was fascinated and agreed to look inside the stranger's traveling show tent. All of a sudden, the stranger grabbed Pinocchio by his wooden arms and threw him into a cage. You're going to be my main attraction, he snarled. Geppetto's fairy had been following Pinocchio to make sure he was getting to school safely, and when the puppet master left Pinocchio in his cage, she flew down to him. Geppetto told you not to talk to strangers, Pinocchio, the fairy said gently. I didn't, he cried. When he told this lie, something very odd happened. His wooden nose seemed to grow a little longer. Pinocchio... If you promise to tell the truth and go straight to school, I will free you from this cage. Pinocchio nodded eagerly, so the fairy unlocked his cage with her wand. Straight to school now, Pinocchio, she warned as he ran back down the path. A little further down the way, Pinocchio met a sly ginger fox. Hello, little wooden boy, he said. You look like you're on the way to Fun Island. What's that? asked Pinocchio suspiciously. The fox told him all about Fun Island, a wonderful place for boys to go and play all day, much better than school. Pinocchio was so excited that he gave all his school books to the fox in return for a ticket to Fun Island. The fairy flew down beside Pinocchio as he ran towards the harbor. Where are you going, Pinocchio? she asked. To school, lied Pinocchio, and his nose grew as long as his arm. When Pinocchio got to the island, it wasn't like he was expecting. As soon as they got off the boat, all of the little boys were locked in chains and put to work, chopping wood and carrying it. Nasty men whipped them as they worked, telling them to try harder. If you don't work hard enough, we will turn you into donkeys to pull our carts, they threatened. Geppetto's fairy flew down to Pinocchio a third time. Why are you crying, Pinocchio? she asked. Pinocchio sobbed harder and apologized for lying. I would give anything to leave this island and find my father again, he wept. I promise not to talk to strangers or tell lies any more. The fairy took pity on the little boy. She waved her wand. His nose shortened and his shackles fell off. Run back towards the shoreline, Pinocchio, and swim, she urged. Pinocchio swam and swam towards the mainland. He saw a boat coming towards him. It was Geppetto, come to search for him. Pinocchio screamed as a huge whale appeared behind his father and swallowed his boat right up. 
Pinocchio splashed towards the whale to save his father, but the whale opened his mouth wide, and Pinocchio was pulled right in. Inside the whale, it was dark, wet, and slimy. Pinocchio swam deep into its belly, where he found Geppetto floating amongst the boat wreckage. Geppetto and Pinocchio made a small fire from the wreckage of the boat, so they could stay warm inside the whale. The smoke clouded the whale's belly and curled up into its nose. The whale gave a terrific sneeze. Pinocchio and Geppetto were propelled right out of the whale's stomach and back to the beach of the mainland. Safe at last, they hugged each other and whooped with joy. I'm sorry I lied and didn't go to school, Father. Pinocchio said, "I promise I will be a good boy from now on." The fairy looked into Pinocchio's wooden heart and saw that he truly meant those words. She flew down one last time and said, "Pinocchio, when you swam into the mouth of the whale to save your father, you proved yourself to be brave and selfless. Those are qualities of a real boy." She waved her wand, and Pinocchio's little wooden body turned into real skin and hair. Pinocchio was a real boy. Geppetto couldn't believe his eyes. "We can be a family now, father." Cried Pinocchio in return for this wonderful gift. Pinocchio never lied again, always listened to Geppetto, and was a very good real boy.